In this video, Phil's going to show you how to extract data from records and lists in Power Query. And this is a question we see regularly, which is not surprising because records and lists are fundamental to Power Query. However, you might be surprised how easy it is to extract that data with a custom column. Now, Phil will be using Excel to demonstrate, but it works the same in Power BI. In some scenarios, you may even have a situation where you have records inside lists or lists inside records. In this first scenario, if we look at the second column here of data, you can see in this list I have a record. The second list is actually empty. The third and the fifth rows are blank. And the fourth row contains a list that has a record inside it. I've seen this type of data structure uh, from things like APIs and sometimes when you're pulling different types of data from SharePoint. But whatever the uh, source of your data, you need to know how to extract particular bits of information from inside your lists or records. Sometimes the approach may be simply to filter out your blank rows and then extract those lists. But as you can see here, I can't do that. I don't have the choice. And anyway, in this situation, I want to keep all my rows. Let's explore this data a little bit further so you understand what I'm going to try and do. First off, I'll duplicate the query and then I'll click on list here to drill down into it which gives me access to this record. And then if I click on the record, you can see it contains three fields, the ID, the name, and the email address. What I want is to pull out the name from that record, and that will be the name of the project manager for the particular project location. So where there is no data in the data column, I want to know that a particular location has no project manager. So as I said, I don't want to be filtering out rows in the data column that are currently blank. To directly access the project manager name inside the record that's inside the list, let's add a custom column, call it project manager. And I'm gonna use the record.field function. Now the record is inside the list in the data column. So I'm gonna get the data column. And because the data column contains a list, I'm gonna use curly braces to access the first item in that list. And remember it's indexed from zero. So the zeroth item, which is the first item in that list. And the field that I want is the name from the record. As you can see, it's picked out the two project managers where they actually exist. So for Dublin and Atlanta, the list for Brisbane is empty. And for Copenhagen and Cairo, there is no data. So how do we deal with these errors? Well, we just wrap our custom column code in try otherwise. So try to extract that data from the record. Otherwise, just give me blank. And I'll just get rid of this duplicated query. I don't need it. In the second scenario here, we have a column of data with records and inside those records are lists. I'll duplicate this so we can drill down and see what's actually in here. So in this particular record, click on the list and you can see it's the same information as the first query. We've got the project manager ID, their name and their email address. And if we look at the second record, this is an empty list. And for Atlanta, we've got Rick Grimes in there. So again, I want to access the project manager's name. So back in the original query, because the record contains a field called data and that data is a list. So we're gonna use record.field again. Just call this list data, this new column and record.field the data is coming from the data column and i want to get the data field so that gives me our lists as you can see we've got a couple of errors which is to be expected because there is no data for copenhagen and cairo and as before you can use try otherwise to prevent those errors from occurring so now we've got the lists it's just a case of grabbing the second element in the list because that's the project manager name so I can add another column, call it project manager. And I want to get the second element in the list. Now remember that it's indexed from zero, so it's actually index one. Again, we've got errors. 
So I can just wrap that in try otherwise. But I'm also going to just do both of those last two steps in one go. So let's just back up and start off from here again. First thing I did was to access the data field in the record and then access index number one, which is the second element in the list. And that gives us the project manager name. So let's do all of that in one go. Let's just edit this code here. Now at the moment it's just grabbing the data field from the record in the data column. And to grab the project manager name, all I need to do is add the index one on the end here. And then I'm putting try to grab that data. Otherwise, just give me a blank. And then I don't need this step at all. And we have the project manager. And delete this duplicated query again because I don't need that. In this third scenario, the data column contains a mixture of lists, records, and just blank values. You can see in the first list here, uh, the data is familiar. We've got the project manager ID, their name, their email address. And for the record, we have a record that contains the ID, the name, and the email. As you can see for the other two rows, the data is similar and the last row is blank. To grab the data from the list, we just need to use indexing to grab the element we want. And we know that to grab the data from the record, we just need to use record.field and the name of the field we want to grab. But how do we know whether we're working with a list or a record? Well, we can use the value is function. Let's create a new column and I'll show you how it works. Call it project manager. If value dot is and the value we're checking is from the data column and I want to check if it's type list then grab the data from the list that's at index one else and then we can check for a record value else if and then we use value dot is again else if the value in the data field is of type record then get the data from the name field in that record and we need to use record.field to do that from the name field else just give me a blank in this case i haven't used try otherwise because it's not generating errors i'm confident of the data structure in the list or the records but you still could wrap all of that code in a try otherwise if you want so there you go, there's some ways to deal with data in records and lists and how to extract specific items of data from each. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.